Welcome to episode five. I moved my uh, staircase uh, over to this side of the room to be continuous to the other staircase. It used to be over by Tinker's Construct. You notice I'm using a texture pack. Um, not exactly what I would like, but it's be better than just vanilla. First thing I'm going to do is put in power in. I've already started that, but we'll finish it now. So I'll go to Mechanics Workbench. I've already typed in at MEK to bring up a me mechanism. So pick the um, wind generator, hit the question mark, and we can see that we don't have two of the items it wants. So now we're going to hit R on this, and we're going to click question mark again, and we're going to make two energy tablets. And we'll go again, hit the wind generator. And we'll make a second wind generator already have one. So I was going to build a tower to put my power on, but I didn't like any of the towers I built. So I started building a wizard's tower. Then when I looked to put power on top of it, it looked awful. Even though I could sort of hide it. Instead, I put that, um, I've just built the wall. The tower as is, added um, various decorations to it. It's a Jarcraft based design. So we so here's a better view of it. Um, I of course modified the original and then with the texture pack it looks even different. So then we'll go take a look over here. Downstairs, I have a um, walkway across to the tower. There's a checked up view of it. Uh, a little fence from Tink. Uh, this is from Tinker's Construct. A partial fence. So they have a little water down there. It ends over there. So if we go down, I have a tunnel, which I think I'm going to move a little bit to the right, uh, tweak it a little bit, and this tunnel goes underneath the tower, you saw by the four corners, and I have the staircase, which is too wide, about four high, uh, it gives a nice size without being too large, and we go up the top here, I've already opened up my window, so let's go ahead, okay, so, so you can see I've already placed the, uh, solar panels and uh, they sort of overlap with that tree there hopefully but, um, I got wind turbines all along here I didn't want to knock down a nice big tree there not as nice as I would like but it's there so now I'm going to stand over here drop a window in here and second window there and I'm going to go back in over here and we might as well close this up I'm using granite bricks uh, for decoration purposes in this room. So you can see the um, windmill power generation there. So I put cabling in. That should connect them. And then if I put one more in, I'm now connected to the rest. So now I'm just going to close it off with some uh, cord brick panels. They look a little dark on the ceiling. I've been trying to tweak that. So that's it for now. I'm going to uh, do some work off camera and then we'll, we'll get back with some more mechanism. Okay, so I made several changes. I removed Tinker's Construct from up here. I don't really need as much. I still have to, I can move my signs down. Probably not going to use those materials anymore. Um, so what I've done is move the Tinker's Construct completely out of these floors all the way down to the uh, entry floor so should I need it this here and down below in this area I didn't discuss earlier I began the setup for or doubling tripling quadrupling quintupling so right now I have a redstone furnace that now outputs to the chest above it I have an enrichment chamber, which would be good enough to, for ore doubling, but really, uh, we really want to use a pulverizer if we're just ore doubling. 
Uh, and then I've added a crusher. And I will be adding a purification chamber right here. So you can power is around behind. Actually, I need to. Uh, I'll have to make some decisions how to run it because I want to, want to use this whole uh, structure as is. Unless it causes a problem. But it's the purification chamber. That would give me more tripling, but I need to add um, a source of oxygen, so electrolytic separator, source of water, feed that. I don't want to do that behind that whole section there. But, you know, that's a little tricky because of the... Uh, that. Probably uh, really wanted to do Ender I.O. Well, we'll see. Um, I can just uh, run it underneath the floor. Or I can see if I can run the fluid underneath the floor. We'll see. We'll see what works. So that's where I am at this point. Uh, this room here uh, has a nice view. With this texture pack, the windows are clear. I could also do that with Tinker's Construct and, and the regular texture pack, which I may switch back to. Uh, I'm a little more used to the, uh, the patterns there. So that's it for the moment. Okay, after looking at the layout of this room, which I'm going to call my machine room, I made a decision to remove the survival generators and the mechanism systems will extend along that wall. I also redid the power, so instead of the power going up and across, it now goes down. So now there's just a power line running along the edge of the wall underneath this equipment with room for uh, uh, changing things. This power cable now runs underground along here. Uh, so it can be inspected in case there's an issue or I want to change something. I have a, in the middle of a big stairwell, I have a just enough space for a ladder and the power conduit. And when we get up here, you'll see that I am in the room where the windmills are located. And the more appropriate way to get there is, of course, the staircase, uh, which is a nice uh, length and that leads down to this area. The power cables are actually underneath this wall section here. And when you get back over here, we're back into the equipment room, which I need to work out. Okay, so we now have started our upgrades. Um, we switched to an energized smelter here. Configuration is this button here, so we get eject on. I'm going to eject out the top, that's output. Input is on the right. And just because we can, we just set it to tell it that the energy is coming from the back. But it'll do that anyways, apparently. Okay, so that's the energy smelter. The enrichment chamber is set sim uh, up at the left, and the rest are similar. Eject on. Same for the crusher. And for the purification chamber. You'll notice the purification chamber now has oxygen in here. And that's because I put an electrolytic separator here. And you'll notice that you notice hydrogen is almost full. Well, I'll take care of that a little bit later. We can empty it, but I was hoping to do a gas burner. So the oxygen is coming out of this side, which is on the right-hand side, which is this pipe right here. This is, let's see if we can do it. Oh, well, that is a uh, basic pressurized tube capable of transferring gases. This here is a basic mechanical pipe for transferring fluids. So this is my energized smelter. So you got water in there, producing hydrogen and oxygen in the tube. And I got the RF connected up up the, in the front. Uh, apparently that's where it wants to go. And down below I have an aqueous accumulator from uh, thermal expansion, uh, surrounded by water. Doesn't have to be on all doesn't have to be all the way around, but I just do that for convenience sake. I could uh, do it different. I could actually fill in those blocks. And so I got a little inspection area here I put together. Um, as we move forward along this. So now we're going to put uh, some copper ore in here. We'll just do uh, the six. And this will overload the system and later on we'll hook up the gas generator. So here's our oxygen being used. And then you'll see as it produced three copper clumps, which are being processed. You should go through all the recipes and make some interesting things. And you see that going through. Of course, none of these are advanced machines. These are, um, actually, they don't actually tell what they are. But they should be just basics. They show an inventory. So we can see we're processing along. Oh, you can see we're stuck. 
but we'll take care of that in a bit. And so we got a dirty copper dust going through the enrichment chamber, and it's all pouring in here, being processed, and we are producing copper ingots, which we'll store in our hardened uh, machinist workbench. And so after I get the next step set up, I'll be back. Okay, so I moved some equipment over here. I've got two pulverizers, an induction smelter, and I put uh, cobblestone in the induction smelter with sand. So this is a relatively new recipe. What's interesting is the slag, um, I'm not sure how new this is, is you can use slag with dirt and water to make clay if you're short of clay. Okay, let's look at the next step in the uh, mechanism system. So, same as before, uh, hidden underneath there is uh, the same box before, but it didn't rotate. I've put an electrolytic separator here on this side instead of the back side. Um, now, initially when I was doing 3x ore generation, I had a um, uh, gas burn generator underneath here, but now I'm running the hydrogen up. You can see I'm full of oxygen. And now, what I've done is I got the chemical injection chamber here, which needs hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride. Behind that, I have the chemical infuser. You see the hydrogen chloride is being produced. I'm feeding chlorine from the right side, actually feeding hydrogen from the left side. That's this pipe right here. Um, I've chosen to route my uh, chlorine through tanks, just in case it gets full, that way I don't lose any. Uh, maximize it. Now the trick is the electrolytic separator here right now because it's feeding everything through you can't see what's going through but you can see the brine is coming in. Now the brine is coming from back here. Uh, it's outputting sodium here. I'll, I'll, I'll have it empty when I fill it up. I don't think there's a use for sodium. You notice I put all the blocks in here to um, keep it from connecting. You see immediately it connects. Probably doesn't hurt anything but it's the best. So there's my uh, purification chamber. Um, you could do 3x ore processing by going in there, but instead we'll go ahead and we'll pick something, something worthwhile. Oh, well, it's the heck. We'll take some tin. Take the tin. We'll put it into the chemical injection chamber. So put the tin in the chemical injection chamber. And it'll begin processing. So we'll go all the way down the cha chain. You can see right now that the chest is empty. Take a look at that in a moment. So we're processing, you can see the particle effect. So there's our sodium and chlorine going on this side. Electrolytic separator. Now the tricky thing is in order to get the um, brine solution out of the thermal evaporation tower, we need a device known as the configurator. So, and that was rather frustrating because it's not easy to look up. So if you take the configurator and you click on this, you can see that I can turn redstone rent, sensitivity on and off. If I shift click on it, I change it to connection type none, normal, which actually won't do anything, push, and pull. Pulls that one there, that's the one we want. And that will then continue to feed Brian into here. And you'll notice that I actually have, well until recently I had a lot of brine. I must have done something to empty it just now. Uh, you can see I'm out of water. I haven't gotten real fancy with the water yet. Right now the water just fed off a, a single aqueous accumulator. I should get a pump. Some pumps a little bit of water here. This is just to, to test the basic setup. So the water comes in and with the temperature running we're already producing um, as much as it can produce. It looks like 25 mil buckets for tick whenever there's water in there. So we got it so hot. So that means the brine is coming into here, which we can see it and it pushes it out. Sodium, you can see it ticking up. Those will be empty. And you can see the chlorine. So when I'm not processing, you can already see the hydrogen chloride is maxed out. Hydrogen is starting to build up. Hydrogen is building up because I'm actually using oxygen. So at present, this system, um, this mix is working. But one could end up with a case where you had, didn't have enough hydrogen and not enough oxygen. In which case, you would probably run these separately and set a, a separate uh, electrolytic separator just to produce hydrogen and one that is to produce oxygen uh, for these devices. Or you'd use interlace the two. Uh, I haven't come up with a better arrangement. 
I, ha I did have to turn. You'll see if I take this out. I had to turn the purification chamber around in order to um, get it so um, I can put the electrolyte acceptor on this side. But we see it doesn't seem to matter because I'm still getting a connection here with the uh, with the uh, oxygen or with the hydrogen and I'm processing. I would really love to be able to put this back, but I'm not sure I can. So if I just take this out here, don't really like to have extra connections as they could cause some problems. So I got two of these, so I'm just going to shift click those in there, which means in the can't see what's going on, but let's go ahead and put the pressurized tube back in. You can see it connects. Connect that one there. Now we have a nice connection for the hydrogen, at least in this system. This does give us a track connection in. Um, I suppose actually one could use, not sure how one wants to do this in order to maximize uh, production. Right now, just got the basic setup, minimum amount of water. Um, it's enough to handle a little bit of processing I'm doing for this demonstrate at this stage. I really don't need more ores. Um, only done this is for demonstration purposes. And let's see, what do we have? Do we have we processed? So you can see we processed all four tin. Uh, it's made all the way through the crusher. We've been slow enough that we actually can see that. Now we have 16 tin produced from four ore. We already have too much uh, different tins in here. So we really I'm trying to get this so it's only one of each. Oh, this is actually a chest full of stuff. It's in here that I try to keep it balanced. Um, so I want enough to build. I was most recently ah the one step I didn't include is I want a little more heat generation, I'll get fancy. So what I did is of course I needed another. Uh, thermal evaporation valve, and what we'll see is so that's the thermal evaporation valve. This is your um, I have them over here. That's your basic thermodynamic conductor, and I just put a heat generator in here. You can see, of course, now it's not producing anything really. Um, so yeah, I found it easy to drop from the ceiling. It's so if I step back a bit, we can, uh, we can start to see it start dissipating heat. I could add a second one on the back side if I wanted to, or maybe even uh, a series of them in the area if I thought I needed more output. But for the moment, this is producing enough heat. You can see my dissipated heat is uh, 11.44 millikelvin per tick. Um, it's not producing electricity because that's one. And so that's enough to, it's not, I'm not at the max, but I'm not actually using max yet. So that's it for this episode. And next time I'm back, I'll believe the next step will be the 5X ore production just because we can. Um, I'll probably just build another one of these thermal evaporation towers to feed that. Um, I don't want to try to reroute all this stuff all over the place. And, so we'll see how that goes and figure out where we place things out. Um, crushing into the rest of the house. Uh, probably uh, upgrade the water production for the thermal evaporation tower. And so that's it.